Well guys, this is it. This is going to be the final things that you probably missed in Kirby and the Forgotten Land. We have gone all the way through this game and found so many secrets in the last couple of months and it has been so exciting. I love this game so much and I just wish it would last forever. Hopefully this DLC or something coming soon because man, this game is awesome and there's so many great details implemented by HAL Labs. Of course, all good things must eventually come to an end. And as we stretch this so thin, there are probably zero secrets left in this game. I'm sure some people are going to find some later on down the road, but this is going to be the last time we cover a giant secret video like this. Maybe we'll do more with glitches because there seems to be tons of glitches in this game. So if you guys do see glitches or have any that I have not covered yet, Feel free to add them, but this is going to be the last fact video. Thank you so much to everybody that's been submitting all of their different findings with this game. You guys are awesome, and of course, thank you to everybody that submitted them for this video as well. And without further ado, I have 10 final things that you guys probably didn't know with Kirby in the Forgotten Land. First one we have here is Valerie thought that you could actually eat the snowballs and gain the ice ability, which does not work. However, I didn't even know you could eat the snowballs. I thought this would be a pretty cool one to show that yes, Kirby can actually get his mouth wide enough to grab these things and shoot them out as the same size as well. Yeah, he can shoot the snowball back out as a snowball, not even a star, which is pretty cool and it's a fun projectile to just shoot at things. What's very interesting is that you probably recall the difficulty of finally catching that giant gold blipper. But something that I actually noticed after looking back at my gameplay is that, you know, without Elflin, it's just Kirby pulling this thing up. There's no help. But when Elflin comes back and you try to fish for this thing again, Elflin actually jumps for the pole and tries to help Kirby reel it in. It's actually very funny and probably a lot of people might not notice this because you probably played this game while Elflin was missing as soon as you unlocked it. So you guys told me last time that the weird thing that I sucked up from Kirby's house was actually the mug on his table. What's very interesting about this mug is once Kirby inhales it or knocks it off the table, it's gone for good until you enter a level and come all the way back and then it respawns. But that's not really the fact here. The fact is you can actually light the fireplace in Kirby's house, which is pretty obvious if you think about it, but it's something that I never tried and actually never knew you could do. Yeah, anything that has a fire effect can light it. So yes, even Kirby's hammers charged up will light the fireplace. Pretty cool. Our first battle with Goromondo was very very exciting. Of course, just fighting this giant gorilla at the outside of some type of abandoned mall was pretty cool. But there is a cool glitch that we can do using the hammer jump in order to make our way back into the mall after we already initiate the boss fight. If you do the hammer jump correctly, you can make your way back through the window where Kirby actually jumped in. I actually made my way to the roof. You can go to the roof and see everything from above from the top of the mall view and you can jump back in through the sky view all the way back into the inside. Once back in, you can navigate the mall like normal before you fight Gormando, but this time there's some differences. For one, the camera angle is shifted to always face Gormando, so you'll have a new look at this place, which is actually pretty cool. You get to see everything from a new angle, which kind of gives it like a free roaming camera Kirby game, which would be super exciting by the way in the future. But yeah, it kind of changes things with that. The Awoofies once again spawn right down there so you can still fight them. For some strange reason, the pile of banana horde is gone. It's just not there anymore and not sure why. I didn't take any of them, I promise. You can also go back in rooms that you previously weren't allowed to go in, like all the way back here, and you can find even various hallways that we previously couldn't even go down. And of course, we can watch Gormondo through the window, even when he tries to hit us with rocks that are clearly too far away, or he'll even jump towards Kirby from time to time. It is possible to skip the intro cutscene to Tropic Woods boss battle by doing a specific movement with the fire Kirby ability by bonking onto this rock at a certain angle. Now I found this to be very difficult to complete, so I found a better way of doing this. Now, this method doesn't require you to have any specific ability. If you stand at this post right here, face right, crouch, roll forward, and hold to the right, you will eventually skip the cutscene, and after a couple tries, you'll get it down. The cutscene will just not happen, and even the cage with the birds holding the money will just still be there. You can't really touch it or anything, you'll clip right through it, but you can fight the boss like normal just without any HUD for him. Now, you might even ask, does this have a reason? Is there a point doing this? Well, yes, for speedrunners, if they're trying to go for the 100%, there's missions that require you to beat the boss in different ways. For instance, there's one mission that requires you to beat the boss without using any copy ability which could take a very long time. This way, it actually works if you just use your copy ability since you skip the cutscene, it kind of bypasses that. So you can pretty much get almost all the Waddle Dees at once, which is very useful. Now, when the second cage drops down, it just kind of clips through the first one, and they're both still there, which is weird, and you can even see the one still in the background as you're celebrating after the level complete, but yeah, pretty weird. 
this is a neat little trick. Ranger Kirby, level 1 Ranger Kirby that is, actually has a light on his helmet, and it actually works as a light. And his little stars that he shoots can also light up a cave. So you can actually use this light in dark places without using the light bulb at all. And in fact, you only need it to open this first door and you can maneuver your way all the way to the end. You can even flutter on certain platforms to make your way up without having to take the detour to the light bulb areas. In the stage through the tunnel, you'll find a section with the stairs, but the first time you'll use Stair Mouth Kirby. Pass the first set of stairs and make your way all the way almost towards the end of this section where you'll find the second set of stairs. Now with these set of stairs in Kirby's mouth, make your way all the way back to the first set. With the second set, put it up against the wall where the first set once was, because we want to drop this first set of stairs over the ledge so we can get the first set to respawn in that same area that the new set is sitting in. Hopefully you follow what I'm saying. But we want to take that first set, drop it off, and hurry up and jump over to the second set of stairs right now. If done correctly, it will spawn on top of each other and shoot them both up in the air. Now, there are clips of people getting a lot higher and in fact the stairs going like infinitely up into the air. So if you do it right, maybe you can get it to go higher, but I was able to get up here to these beams and that was good enough for me. It is possible to completely skip the Wild Bonkers mini boss in this area, the first level of the water world, jump up on the tops of these trees and then float all the way downward towards the screen and eventually you'll make your way over an invisible wall. You'll notice it because it'll have a little bit of a jerk animation to it and you'll see Kirby kind of move in a weird way, which will kind of signify that you've made it over the wall. This then allows you to go on the outside of the mini boss arena and not even trigger the boss fight in the first place. And to prove it to you, I kind of went back and showed you what actually happens. It still spawns the wild bonkers boss fight if you do go back. Now I've showed you guys the cone trick jump before with cone mouth Kirby. It's not too difficult. So you want to set this cone in a good area. Right here is perfect. You want to have Kirby jump, eat the cone, and then jump again, and then use the ground pound in order to get up here. And then if you ground pound again, you'll make your way to the top of the roof. You'll see all the stitching at the top, which kind of just helps the lighting in a certain way, but it's hard to see and move around with that above you. So you'll have to kind of waddle away and try to find different ways to move around but there's not much you can do. You might be able to go to the end of the level. I didn't actually try it, but I think you'll be able to jump over the wall and get to the end of the level. By no means is it any faster than just sticking Kirby into the wall, so yeah. It's still a pretty cool trick though, so feel free to try it out. Last and certainly not least, it is possible to skip all of these portions with the mud where you have to wash it away with the water mouth Kirby. All you have to do is have some type of fire ability, either volcano or dragon fire, and boost your way to the end. You can fly all the way to the end area, bonk on the wall, and float up, and you'll get past the first section with ease. For the second section, you want to get up on this pole and right on top of this rocket and fly across to all the light posts all the way down the path. Just jump across them and you'll make your way through the second area. For the third and final area, yeah, there's no hope with this ability. Now, you can use the super jump with the hammer. The, of course, the hammer glitch is just our best friend at this time. And really, you can use the hammer glitch for everything I just said. This just looks cooler with the fire going through all the different portions of the level. Yes, the hammer glitch will eventually get Kirby to the top of the giant tower at the end of the level, which means you can bypass all of these water sections and just use hammer Kirby, which is pretty cool. And that was, once again, the final 10 things that you probably didn't know in Kirby in the Forgotten Land. I'm sure there's still a couple things, but I think we're gonna end it here, folks. It's been a fun ride. Of course, I still am looking into glitches and stuff, so if you guys can find more glitches, that would be great. I may make just one giant collage of all the coolest glitches in the game, but thank you so much for finding so many cool, neat secrets that HAL Labs has put in this game. It's been a fun ride. Thank you so much. If you really enjoyed this content and wanna see more stuff like it in the future, leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Kirby and all things Nintendo in general. And like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.